Is this fucking... Is it on? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 119 of the Spears Sunday's podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm recording this one on a uh, little Saturday night here. I'm, I'm having a fucking rager today. And by that, I don't mean the, uh, the traditional definition of a rager, where it's like a cool party, everyone's at a nightclub, you know, people are fucking trying to rub their balls on girls. That's what I didn't. What I'm... I'm having the other kind of rager. The kind of rager where I'm just fucking mad. I'm trying to build a shelf at the moment. Trying to build a shelf and you know what? Either either the instructions suck or I'm not smart enough. And I have way too much pride to admit that it's me. So, fuck Bunnings. I'm trying to... Let me tell you, I'm trying to build this shelf, right? For my merchandise. I'm in the warehouse. I'm trying to organize my fucking life. So what I what I went and I went to Bunnings and I bought like this shelf that is just that's just like a bunch of cubes, right? And what I want to do with this is I want to fucking um, I want to like build this shelf. That's step one. That's going to take me fucking three years, I think. So I'm going to build this thing, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each cube with like a different size. So small, large. Uh, Small, medium, large, extra large, there's going to be no jumbo, alright? It'll be small, medium, large, XL, no jumbo. Because I'm 24 years old, and I'm I'm not going to be like, can I get a jumbo? I'm not doing that shit, alright? Small, medium, large, extra large, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the fucking t-shirts, and the hoodies, and all that shit that's up on the top, uh, near the roof in the warehouse, and I'm going to put them in this shelf, so that... Whenever anyone buys something from loosebeers.com slash merch, always plug, <laughs> I can just walk over to the... Instead of having to go up the stairs into the box, find the fucking thing, bring it down, try not to fall down the stairs with no handrail, uh, fold it all up, put it in the bag, fuck that. Instead, it'll be in the shelf, folded up, ready to go straight into a fucking bag, in, fold it up individually. Because right now they're in like stacks of 10 t-shirts and it's the biggest fuck around to go upstairs and then unravel them because sometimes I'll sell one t-shirt and then other times I'll sell fucking seven there's no method to it so I'm trying to I'm trying to get a fucking method to it but apparently obviously either I'm too smart or but I'm too smart to follow instructions or Bunnings is too fucking retarded to write it so I'm stuck I've just gave I cracked it no shit, the shelf is about half my height. So it's about a meter high. There's like 16 different shelves on it. And do you know how many, how many steps are in the instructions? How many steps? You would, like, like if, it, if this was Lego, there'd be 150 fucking steps. But because it's Bunnings, there's a three. Three steps. And, and, and there's no, no words either. Not put this into that and then use... No, no words. Three steps and instead of telling you what to do, it's a fucking picture with arrows and dotted lines. It's like what they've done is they've... Is they've, they've asked someone who built... Who invented this fucking shelf. They're like, hey man, uh, seeing as you invented this thing, could you give us some uh, instructions? And then he came back with like 20 steps. And they're like, oh, sorry, man, we're going to have to print this over three pages. Uh, so can we condense this this 20-step instructions down into fucking three pictures? And then he's like, what do you mean three pictures? What about all the words and that I wrote and, like, all the other steps? And like, yeah, yeah, nah, can you just get rid of them? Oh, but, but then it's not going to make sense. Yeah, but... The thing is, man, no one's going to know that it doesn't make sense until they're home and they've unpacked it. And the, and, the, and and that's their fucking problem. Man, what happened to it? That's You know what? What happened to instructions? I go through... I, I, I feel like here's the thing. I have, I have such a hatred for instructions. And I was thinking that maybe it's because I'm an arrogant asshole. But no, I think it's because instructions are the problem. They used to be good, man. I used to love instructions. You fuck. Do you remember when video games came with instructions? And pamphlets and maps? You'd buy fucking Rayman on Nintendo 64, you'd open it up and then have like a 30 page 
little document in there with the background of all the characters and the maps and the controls and tips and level overviews and all that kind of shit and lore and you'd read it before you played the game and you're like, man, I'm so psyched to play this game. Now, when you buy a fucking Xbox One game or whatever, you open it up and it's got like a double-sided tiny pamphlet and the only thing that has that it has on there is an advertisement for the DLC that's going to come out in six months because they don't make fucking full games anymore. They, they make you pay $60 for three quarters of a game. And they're like, hey, if you want the other four quarters... Are you, I'm sorry, I'm retarded. If you want the other quarter of the game, what we've done is we've divided that last quarter into four quarters and then we'll sell it back to you at 15 bucks a piece. But don't worry, we'll give you a special deal if you buy the season pass. And then you'll feel like you're saving money when in reality we sold you an incomplete game on purpose and made you pay for the rest. Isn't that a fucking deal? Oh, uh, and, and also, when we, uh, when we upgrade our hardware and make you buy the next console, all the games you bought for the last one, yeah, you, uh, you're fucked, you can't play them. Sorry, you're going to buy them again. But don't worry, they'll be ten bucks cheaper. If you buy the season pass for the old game. <laughs> so I haven't been having a rager. Man, I wish I was out at night rubbing my ball sack on a stranger. That'd be so much more fun. Actually, you know what? It's not fun. I, I remember when I used to do that. You go out and you just fucking try and dance on some chick. Why is, why is that the norm for hitting on a girl in a nightclub? You know why? Because the music's so loud, you can't... <laughs> Dude, if you're in a... If... Here's the problem with nightclubs. The music's too loud to ask for consent. That... <laughs> That's the fucking issue. We need... You know what we need? We need a universally accepted uh, sign language that means do you consent to me rubber my nutsack on your ass crack? Because... Because when, you, when you're in a nightclub... Short of actually doing it and then gauging her reaction, there's no way to tell. <laughs> is she dancing sexy because she is into me or because she's trying to show off to her friends? I, I can't tell. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to test the waters by walking up behind her and rubbing my nutsack on her lower back. I mean, for me, I'd be rubbing my nutsack on their fucking shoulder blades. <laughs> But you know what I mean, all that grinding shit. Night, you know what? Nightclubs suck. I, 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 I lied. I never, I never did that to chicks. I went to nightclubs um, twice. I think it was either twice or... I, I think I went to Cloud9 once or twice. And, and all, I, all I could think of was this, is su this place is such... At the same... It was so packed that it was at the same time uh, a fire hazard and like just a date rape zone. Like, you'd walk into the doors and, and you, you could just smell dissolving pills. <laughs> it tricks. You could just be like, oh yeah, I can see this happening. What else? I went to... Uh, the only nightclub I ever in, enjoyed... You know when you were too young to go to night... I think I might have talked about this before. You know when you were... You remember when you were too young to go to a nightclub? Like, when you were 15, 16, and you saw, like, in TVs and movies, their rep representation of what a nightclub is and you remember thinking fuck man that looks so cool I cannot wait until I can go into nightclubs me going to nightclubs was such a thing that I just desperately wanted to do and I think it was because of skins I'll t dude sorry I was going to talk about this nightclub but can I just say skins that fucking TV show destroyed a generation. That television show, I don't know what the fuck it was about Skins, but when it was on late at night on SBS, when I was in like year seven and eight, that destroyed all of my friends because for some reason, when you watch Skins, you felt like the most unique teenager on the planet and you were like, I'm so fucking cool, I'm going to go and do that. And you'd be watching Skins and you'd see that like 15 year old Effie girl or some shit just fucking a 30 year old and, and that would take out one of your female friends and she'd go off and do that. You'd be like, oh fuck, I've lost her. 
And then there'd be that other dude who wore like suits and sneakers at the same time. And he'd be doing acid and cocaine all the time. And then one of your male friends would identify with him. And then off he'd go. You fucking lost that, mate. And then there'd be that nerdy guy who was trying to keep everyone sane and together. And no one would identify with him. Because who the fuck wants to be the nerd? Skins ruined a generation. It just convinced a whole bunch of like 14, 15 year old people that drugs was the fucking thing to do. And they just destroyed their lives. But the problem is no one, uh, no one got hit by a bus and turned retarded and that somehow fixed them their life. Because that doesn't happen. Isn't that what happened in Skins? Some mad party animal, the really cool guy that everyone wanted to be. And he was doing drugs and drinking all the time. And then he got hit by a bus or something fucked up his head. And then he turned kind of retarded, but not really. And then he stopped being cool. And then, and then for some reason that fixed his life. When in reality, if you were the party animal and you went slightly retarded, they just put you in a fucking home, strap you in a helmet and then leave you there forever. But that wouldn't, that wouldn't look very good on SBS, would it? I mean, that doesn't have any tits in there. <laughs> Fuck that guy. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the only, the only nightclub I genuinely enjoyed, that the the only nightclub that lived up to that representation of what night of what you thought nightclubs were was this uh, club that's now closed in Melbourne called Anyway. I think actually there, there is still an Anyway, but they moved the venue and the venue was nowhere near as good. But the original venue man was like fucking, I think it could fit like a thousand people. Like it was like a super club. It could fit like a thousand people and it was like three different levels. So three separate levels. So on the bottom level, there'd be like the mainstream dance bounce shit that everyone was enjoying at the time. And then the middle level would have like uh, 80s music playing and then the top level would just have like 90s hip hop and rap playing and it was fucking so sick. So you go down the bottom and when you got, it was like three different nightclubs in one place and just people fucking everywhere. And you would always, I always, I always like sitting at the, standing at the bottom of the stairs and just watching girls tumble down it all night. It was the fucking best. It was like, um, it was like a, a a less scary version of Revolver. Is Revolver the one that has the giant staircase? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, I would. Anyway, I was at anyway, right? And it was like three different nightclubs. So if you got sick of one, you just level one. You just got to level two, and you're like, oh man, I'm in a different nightclub. Who can I rub my nutsack on? Dude, I remember there was this one chick, man. In the 90s room. And she. Was just up. She was just like the. It, <laughs> she, there was just this one chick. That was like a full on. Just sliding it up. I don't know what she was doing. She was just loving it right. And, 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 and what it was. Was. She was just dancing on every dude. Every single guy. To the point where. I just. Because I was sober right. I, I just. And I had a girl. So I would just sit at, at the back of the room and I would just watch this chick and everyone around her and no shit, she would dance on ev every dude that would come up to her, she would just rub her ass on. And it was almost like watching it, you could see that there was kind of a line, but not really because that's a bit fun, but there was, but there kind of was, but there wasn't, but there was, there was like this line of fucking dudes pretending that they weren't in a line who all wanted to rub their nutsack on this chick. And what she would do is a dude would come up to her and he'd be like, yeah. And then she'd be like, yeah. And she'd just rub herself all over him and he'd get his fucking, his, his, uh, he, he'd just rub his nuts on her. And then, and then what she would do is she would just dance away and look at the guy while she did it. I don't know what she was doing. She was just like, you're not good enough for me. On to the next one. I don't know if she had like a like a, a, a nutsack feeling system on the on, on her ass, but for some reason, no dude was good enough. So a guy would come up, she'd dance on him, and then she'd do a little spin and she'd make eye contact as she was like as she moved to the next dude. So she just I don't know, I think she was just a massive asshole. And she'd be 
And you could see the guy. It was, you know, it was like, it was like Excalibur. Her pussy was Excalibur. Whoever could pull that pussy out of the club would be crowned king of anyway forever. <laughs> so all these men would walk up and they'd rub their nutsack on, but Excalibur pussy would decide that you're not worthy and she'd twirl away. Then the next guy would come up, start dancing on her, then she'd twirl away. And then, and then one dude, I remember one dude walked up and started dancing on Excalibur pussy and then she was, she was into it for a bit and then she tried to twirl away, but then he followed her. And he, ju- and he just wouldn't let her twirl away. He wasn't holding her or anything. He was just like always standing behind her. So every time she tried to twirl away, he'd be fucking there. And I'll be like, oh shit, it's King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, but he would be like warning off the other dudes because there was that line that wasn't really a line, but was a line and he knew it was there. So he was like making eye contact with dudes, like being <laughs> just, just letting them know you better back off my Excalibur, man. This is my shit. I'm taking this home. I'm going to become the King of England. Fuck you. So that was the way, you know what, I don't think that had anything to do with anyway. I think I just really like watching Excalibur Pussy try and find the perfect ball sack. I think that's what was going on. So anyway, what have you guys been up to? You been up to, you been up to much, huh? I've been, dude, I have been. First of all, I've been not looking at my phone, unless it's for work. So I've actually been looking at my phone quite a lot because I've been working heaps, but outside of calling people and texting cunts for work-related shit, I've just not, I'm not looking at my phone. And it's, it's great. I've been reading books. I just finished American Psycho. Fucking amazing book. Did he do it? Or was he crazy? Was he not? Who knows? That was a real good book, man. And now I'm reading uh, The Shining by Stephen King. And that's so far fucking phenomenal. I'm on this real book reading trip at the moment. It's awesome. I've just been reading heaps of shit. Like anytime I'm not working and I'm traveling or I'm having leisure time, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to either watch one episode of one thing on Netflix or I'm going to read. And now I'm fucking enjoying my TV series and comedy specials much more. And I'm reading fucking heaps. Because I'm not blasting through 39 episodes of some bullshit on Netflix and I can't even fucking retain what I've watched while I look at my phone at the same time. I swear to God, if you cunts look at your phone during my comedy special on the first watching, I am I will be personally offended. Put that shit away. That's what I've started doing. Now when I watch something, I put my phone away. How many times have you fucking watched a comedy special or anything and, and you just zone out, you look, you're scrolling through Facebook at the same time, just ruining it for yourself. So when my special comes out, just put your phone away for an hour. That's all. Unless you're watching it on your phone. In, in which case, put it on airplane mode. Um... Speaking of, comedy specials going great. I think we're on track to the uh, invisible release date that I've set in my head, which, um, when is that actually? What is it? The 30th of June today. So I'm just trying to figure out when I can tell you guys what the release date is. Um, when's next Sunday? Next Sunday is the 8th. So, ooh, I might have, I might have some, uh, I might have some information for you next Sunday, guys. No promises. Something could go wrong. Or could it? I'm just trying to think of what we've done. Hey, no promises. Something could go wrong. But all I'm saying is... I've lost my pen down the side of the couch. I'll get back to you with whatever I was going to say. Did I drop it under the thing? Fucking... Oh, man. You're... Dude, this is so disrespectful to you guys, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pause this. I'm gonna look under the couch for my pen that I've dropped. You know what? You know what's funny as well? I don't even need a pen to do the podcast. <laughs> I just, I just like holding it while I do the podcast. Ah, oh, fuck. Hang on. I'm gonna move the camera, uh, the the microphone. I'm just gonna move that over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look under the couch. Ah, 
fucking... Where is it? Dude, you're kidding me. Did it not fall down? Well, where's it gone then? Oh, what? Dude, I just found two pens. One? I've been looking at for ages. Where's, but where's the other one? Where the fuck did the other one go? That's... Alright, well, I found one pen. I mean, that's good enough. It's, I, I, you know what's weird? I, I lost a pen and I, and I found a different one. So... What was I saying? Oh yeah, comedy special, that's right. Hang on, I'm just moving the camera back, sorry. That was disrespectful. I don't regret it. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I apologise to no one. Uh, uh, comedy special, yeah, so it's going really well. Um, everything's on track to the release date I've set in my head, which you might find out next, next week if nothing goes wrong. Um, and uh, look, we're getting very fucking close, finally. But man, I didn't... When I came back from the cruise, I was like, I'm getting it out here! And I thought it would be a lot easier than it, than it would be. So, uh, do you guys remember the, the company that I was talking about? The distribution company? The American company that wanted to pitch it at Netflix and streaming servers? I told them, I told them to fuck off. Basically, I told them to go away because... Um, You'll find out more about that, that decision in, in the documentary when I, when I release that. But basically, they... I don't know. I felt like I was give, I was give, I would be giving up uh, quite a bit of control, and they wanted to come out in December, and a bunch of other reasons. I was just like, you know what? You guys are amazing. You know what you're doing, but I feel like it, going with you would 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 go against the reason why I started this comedy special, which was to create it for you guys to release it on my own terms, and. Uh, to do it independently and do it my way, um, and I feel like what I, I feel like I'm going to put this thing out, and it'll speak for itself because I think it's real good, and I think it's so good that it doesn't need the backing of a giant corporation to make some fucking waves. I can do that on my own. I mean, that's what we've proven so far with what we what we're doing. You know, you guys and and me and and you your your support behind me. So I told this company to go away politely, of course, uh, because you know, obviously they they just wanted they would they just wanted to help. But I was like, you know what? I feel like obviously this is not my only comedy special. I feel like you know, in my whole career, if I'm doing one every three or four years, I've probably got ten to fifteen in me. Until I retire, and I feel like if I didn't do the first one independently, even if it blew up and got it here and got there, and I feel like I would just, it would just become something that I would regret because this is my only chance at doing something, doing a comedy special independently like this, crowdfunded. You know what I mean? I feel like, I don't know. So that, so anyway. You'll find out more details about that in, in the comedy special documentary, which won't come out until fucking ages after the the special, because obviously we want to chronicle what happens and then post-release as well. But I'm not even thinking about when the fuck that's going to come out. Um, but uh, it's going really well. Oh, man, what we're doing now, though, fuck me. We're getting it, we're getting it rated by the government. <laughs> and if, if you thought it was... If you thought it was as simple as sending them the comedy special and then them telling you it was M.A. or R. or whatever, you're about as dumb as I am. Because it is not that simple, man. Do you, know, do you understand how much of a fuck around and how actually expensive it is to do? And you can't just send them a link? Here's what I have to do to get my fucking special rated. I have to fill out like five different forms. First of all, I had to create an account on the government classification website, which they then, which I, and you can't just create one. You have to apply to create one. And then a few days later, they get back to you and go, yeah, man, approved. Could, like, could you imagine if you signed up to Facebook and you put your email in and your password and your name and your profile picture. And then Facebook was like, we'll get back to you in a couple of days. Like, or any website. So, I, so I, that was a fuck around. And then, what else did I have to do? I had to, I had to, I had to fucking fill out 
like five different forms and one of the one of the forms man i think i'm gonna have to post a screenshot of it because it's so fucking funny i had to like i because because how the rating systems work so there's like i think it was like five different categories so it was like uh violence sex adult themes so discussions of like suicide or or drugs or, or discussions about things that adults would understand so swearing just basically words that that is for adults, uh, but not actually doing those things. So talking about sex is an adult theme, uh, but that's different from a sex scene. So it was like, uh, 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 and then drug use, and then uh, uh, some, I don't know, just a bunch of things. So what I had to do is I had to write down, I had to write, so sexual adult themes, tick, right? Because obviously it's my comedy. And then I had to, <laughs> I had to write down, like, it includes jokes about this and about that and it, about this. And then for the for the adult themes one, it was like, does it have swearing in it? And is it frequent or does it only happen once? So if it was like a movie where the guy says fuck once, you'd be like at 24 minutes when he had the gun out, he said fuck you. And, and that's what happened. But for me, <laughs> I had to write something along the lines of the special includes frequent aggressive use of many different swear words, including but not limited to in order of frequentness I was like, fuck, cunt shit, piss hell, and and it was just, and like I just had to write all this stuff, and then for another one, for the adult themes one, I had to write, includes jokes about suicide, racism disabled people tragedies, recent tragedies and past tragedies, the Holocaust, like just all of this awful shit. And I read it back and I was like, man, this shouldn't get approved for any rating. (laughs) And I know them reading it. They're going to be like, dude, what does he send us? A fucking ISIS beheading video. But I'll post a screenshot of that probably after once, you know, once this comedy special hype is all going and, and everything. Not, not at the moment. We'll see what happens with that. So and so after you f- and then there was like five different forms and then after that you have to say how long it goes for and blah 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 all this kind of shit and then and then you can't like send them a, like I have a, a fucking link that I can send them uh but I but you they won't accept the link because it's the government and it's that fucking backwards that it can't watch a movie from a link for whatever reason. So the only form they accept is either like a DVD. They don't even take a USB. So I have to go and get this thing fucking printed on a DVD. I don't know how the fuck I can do that. And then you have to post it to Sydney. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to like pay for a courier to get it there in a day because I don't want to fucking w- fuck around with postage time. And then after that, they're like, "Oh, t- 20 working days. We'll get back to you." Or you can pay us an extra five hundred dollars, and we'll watch it within five days. So I got to fucking pay. So this whole thing—it's going to cost me like a grand just to get it rated. Man, but but happy to do it so I can get this fucking thing out. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good about it, and we're we're really on track now. I'm talking to all of the people who are the marketing of it. The trailer's getting edited. I should actually see. I've seen a draft of the trailer. I'm getting the second draft of the trailer sometime tonight, which is cool. <coughs> and um, it's going really really good. Uh, me and a, a couple of other people recorded the commentary. I'm not going to tell you who I recorded it with, but we recorded the commentary track on Saturday. Uh, in the radio studio, so it sounds amazing, like, uh, it sounds really, really good, because we're using the professional radio microphones, and, and we also filmed the commentary, which I don't think is the norm, but I think if we can fit it on, I might make the commentary a video commentary, so, so either, actually, let me know what you guys think of this, if I release a video commentary, if I can fit it onto a DVD, would you rather, would you rather see, the comment, because obviously, before watching the, the commentary, you will have watched the whole special, right? Would you rather watch the commentary with with me and the other people, small in the corner, or 
the comedy special small in the corner and us big. Do you know what I mean? What would you run? I can't figure out what, what, what I would prefer to watch because... Because, you know, if, 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 if we... So say I, I point out a detail about the clothes that I'm wearing, you would want to see that. So maybe we should be small in the corner. I'm, I'm leaning towards us being small in the corner just so you can see exactly what we're talking about. I don't know. I've got to play with that. But, but I, let me know which one you would prefer if I can do a, a video version of the commentary. Let me, do let me know because I, I would love to hear that. Um... So that's that's where we're at with the comedy special. It's going really, really good, uh, and yeah, it's 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 done, done. We're literally just facilitating the release of it at this point. And I, I, dude, I've been talking to so many cunts. I can't even remember what we're doing and who I'm talking to uh, this week. That's why I haven't done a video because I've just been on the phone all day calling people. Right now, we're we're we're, we're like organizing. Uh, hoodies are getting printed. Uh, I'm, I've, I mean, I'm a, I fucking need to get on the poster now. The graphic designers just finished it. I need to get that printed now. Um, the the marketing of it. I've been talking to the people who are going to ha- help out with the marketing and the graphics and, and the videos and, and all that kind of shit. Uh, I've been doing the commentary. I've done... I'm also organizing the little premiere cinema screening tours. Uh, and then while that's happening, I'm also organizing my actual stand-up tour which is happening in September and I'm talking to people and venues and all those kinds of fucking people there and probably heaps of other shit we're also doing the radio show and all this kind of shit and I'm trying to read books and I can't fucking build this shelf (laughs) so that's why there's been no video this week I do apologize but it, it was like a choice between either I fucking put out a video or I put the special back a whole week and I'm just I'm at the point now where I'm like you know what it's already a couple months later than what I promised I'm getting this fucking thing out and then I can worry about everything else um, so as as pissed off and as stressed as I've been this week I'm I'm real fucking happy because it's it's almost there man it's it's like you guys don't even know how fucking close it is Unless something goes wrong. And then I'll modify that statement. You guys got no idea how fucking far away this is. But um, no, I've been, I've been having a very fucking productive week. What else did I, what else did I want to talk about today? This week? Uh, oh, dude, I can't believe I haven't talked about this. I had a fucking driver's lesson. Huh? How good's that? I had a driver's lesson, man. Fucking finally. 24 years old. Saddest lesson of my life. Um, and it was, it was great, man. I, I, I learned it in automatic and you know what? I got fucking roasted by all of these manual drivers. Oh, this is why manuals better. Some guy was like, oh, you can take off from, from, from stopping faster. (laughs) Oh yeah. Cool, man. Jeez. That's the number one complaint I hear from every automatic driver is, gee, I wish my car would take off faster. When the light goes green. So I can save like one millisecond. Dude, the only reason you would want to do that is if you're a race car driver. And you're not. You're driving to work. Get a fucking automatic. Welcome to the future. If you're not a race car driver, get a fucking automatic. I'm going to read the comments that people left me. Oh man, I like changing gears. It makes driving fun. That's a guy who is not smart enough to listen to a fucking audio book. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want to listen to words. The only thing that can entertain me is changing gears. What are you just sitting in your car in fucking silence like a sad cunt? Spirit Sundays. I'm going to read some of these comments. Where are we? Just getting this up. Uh, Alright. Was it the last episode where I talked about it? I'm just coming down. <clears throat> um, no, it's not. Uh, was it this one where I talked about the lesbians? Ah, here we go. Benefits of manual. More control over the car, 
and you feel more response to the car. Oh yeah. More, you feel more response. Dude, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel shit. I just want, I, all I want to feel is go, stop, turn. That's it. I don't want to be like, oh man, I can really feel the car speeding up. That's what, you know what, that's why I don't get, like, all these fucking idiots making their car's engine louder. It's literally just noise. Oh, you know what I would like when I drive this car? More noise. <laughs> all those fucking idiots that put giant subwoofers in their car. Oh, man, can you hear the bass? Yeah, but I can't hear any of the other music. If, if that's what you're into, fucking good on ya. But all I can hear is... I can't hear the fucking words. Because you're subwoofers. Two. You can drive any car. Imagine you're at... This is, this is actually the only good point, is you can drive any car. That's a great point, alright? I'll admit, I'll admit that. And you know what? As a... As the perfect option for, for designated driver, someone who doesn't drink ever, I could do that. Like, if my friend's pissed, but he drives a manual. Sorry, mate, you're going to have to kill a family on your way home. I can't drive a manual. You're in a, Even though you're going to blow, like, point fucking 1,000, I'm pretty sure that you're a better driver of a manual car than me. What else? Um, three, more fun. No, that's a bullshit fucking thing. All right. Where are we? Here we go. Advantages of manual cars. Cheaper because of older cars. All right. So an advantage is you can buy a, sh you can drive a shit car. All right. No. How about, how about just save up for, for fucking six more months. Spend two grand extra on a car and then you're fine. Not only do you have a better car that will die later, you also don't have to worry about that fucking stick. More fun. No, alright? Driving. Who's ever said, man, I love driving. It's a lot of fun. Fuck off. You know what I'm going to do? You know what? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. Instead of changing gears, I'm going to have a fidget spinner in my left hand. And then bam, I know I'm having way more fun than any manual driver on the planet. I'm really getting off just, I know there's like, there's like, there's like a, uh, a lot of manual only drivers listening to this with their fists clenched being like, this guy can't even drive a fucking automatic and he thinks it's better than a manual. Fuck him. I'm going to write a big YouTube comment and, <laughs> and go ahead. I don't care. I'm correct and you're wrong. Your opinion is incorrect. A real feeling of being like you're one with a car. Dude, this guy's a fucking transformer. Getting so close to the red line you feel like a god for not blowing your engine. See, the only arguments from manual drivers are manual drivers who also drive like fucking psychopaths. Like, oh, you can't do a good burnout in an auto. Oh, you're gonna suck at drag races if you can't. I don't want to do that shit. I won't even get on a fucking ride at Luna Park. Do you really think I'm going to do a burnout? Where are, where are we? Uh... And yeah, also... Most fucking autos these days have... You have the option to choose your fucking gear anyway, so... I mean, if you really want to, you can fucking do that. So yeah, the driver's license test, I mean, lesson, I wish I was at the fucking test, it was fun, man. The guy was like this old 60-year-old dude, and it, he had just, it became so clear that he'd just been fucking teaching cunts to drive his whole life, and it's the only thing he's ever done, and it's the only thing he cares about. He's like, this is what I do, I do it well, and this is how you fucking do it. And it was great, really good, I got driving on the road straight away, I was passing other cars, I wasn't doing any burnouts because I couldn't change gears. But, you know, I was doing left turns. I did heaps of... Dude, I had so many left turns. And then I did, like, three right turns. And I was like, dude, this is so much harder. <laughs> Why is turning right harder than turning left? Fuck me. I went around a roundabout. That was easy. I understood that shit. 
Uh, so I, I, and then, so basically what I think I'm gonna do is I have like five, I got four vouchers left, so I, oh fuck, I set one up for next week, I can't even remember when I did it. Poor cunt's gonna show up to my house one day and then just, fuck, it won't be there. When did I do it? Oh no, I didn't write it down. Oh, fuck. Oh, Wednesday. My next one's on Wednesday the 4th. Okay, cool. I won't miss that. Oh, fuck. I booked a comedy spot when I'm going to be on radio. Well, I'm going to miss that. <laughs> I'm the fucking worst human on the planet. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll use the, the Google Calendar so I don't forget things. But, you know, I won't check it, so I will forget things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah... <clears throat> I mean, he reckoned I could get he reckon I could get my license by the end of the year. I don't know if that's going to happen because the tool will probably get in the way of learning to drive. But we'll see, we'll see. And then and then I'll I'll just be so bored, man. When I got my like, I'm so bored. I wish I could change gears. No, oh, man. You know what would make this drive? You know what would make driving forty minutes so much fun is if I could change gears every six seconds, bro. I love changing gears, man. It's so fun. <laughs> Who the fuck thinks changing gears is fun? Bro, you know what's... What, say, so you're on, you're on first date. You're on first date. Hey, what do you... So what do you do for fun? Like, what are your hobbies? It's like, I just really love changing gears, man. It's fucking sick. <laughs> Bro, you're gonna come... You're gonna come with me one day. I'll take you out on a date and we'll just change gears all night. It's the funnest shit ever. Fuck off. Changing gears is fun. That you know what you're like you're like that fucking autistic kid that needs that fidget cube where you can press the buttons. It's like oh I love fucking pressing buttons and fiddling with shit. Cause the more I have the the less I have to think, the more I'm stuck with my own fucking thoughts and then I'm just counting the I'm just trying to recite the numbers of pi for no reason. And thinking about how much I hate my job. How did changing gears turn into my eternal hatred for jobs? I don't know, but hey, that's the Speared Sunny's podcast, isn't it? Like, oh, this episode's pretty good, but when is he going to start talking about how much he hated his call center job? That, that was fucking four years ago. I'll never get over it. Um... Well, should we get into miscellaneous bit at the end then, I guess? Um, was there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, before we do, um, the Luke and Lewis radio show, starting on Monday, is going to be on every single weeknight, except for Friday, for two weeks. So, there's now going to be, it'll be four shows a week, for two weeks. Um, and, I mean, we, we're doing survey breaks, so we're filling in for another show. So we're going to try out that late night spot for two weeks. So we got a whole bunch of shit planned. I think it'll be great. So if you if if there was ever a time to to start listening to the radio show, Monday would be really good because basically what we're doing is we're moving time slots. So we're uh, introducing ourselves to a whole new listener. So we're kind of going to be starting everything again, reintroducing ourselves, uh, setting up our characters and and our personalities and stuff. Not that we play fake people, but you know what I mean. We're, we're just introducing ourselves to new people. So if you haven't listened to the radio show, Monday would be a great time to start because we're going we're gonna to be every fucking day. I mean, I don't know if you guys have time to listen to that much fucking audio. I don't know how I have that much time to fucking produce it, but uh, if I can do it, you can listen, all right? I mean, I'm going to be there for fucking two hours listening to the music and trying to bear the ads. You guys can just skip all that shit and listen to the podcast version. Don't tell anyone who works in radio that I said that. <laughs> so that's the thing. <clears throat> Big opportunity. Very excited about it. All right. Oh, where's my inhaler? Guys, I'll be back. I know, I know this is... The, oh, I don't even have to leave. I've got one here. I was going to leave again. False alarm, everyone. Okay. Now, uh... Miss Lane's bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions sent in from listeners, life advice, stories, anything you think I would find interesting or could make funny. Send it into podcast at lewspears.com. Do not e email any of my other emails. It's only podcast at lewspears.com. I'm sick of getting them sent to the other ones. Stop that. I put them straight into the trash. 
I have other emails for other reasons. Podcast at loosespears.com, believe it or not, is for the fucking podcast. All right. <clears throat> Where are we? Oh, great. We got two, we got two returns. So, we got uh, the American paramedic with another story. And we have uh, uh, Eve, uh, the, the lesbian who was having trouble with... Um, uh, her fuck buddy's racist housemate. She's got a bit of an update for us here. Brilliant. All right. First, the American paramedic. Um, nurse doesn't know how to do her job. Hey, Lou. It's Leon, the American paramedic again. As always, I don't know if you'll find this funny or not, but it gave me a laugh. Dude, if it's a medical story and you're unsure about it, I know you're desensitized. Desen- des- desensitized? 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 Desensitized. What the fuck's the word? Desen desensitized. Am I retarded? I know the word. De desen de des des nuts. <laughs> desensitized. Desensitized. That's what it is. I'm stupid. Uh, uh, yeah. What, what I was trying to say before I had a fucking aneurysm. If you you've been desensitized to all the you've been des nuts to all of these fucking things. So if you if you're unsure, if you think it's a little bit funny, I'll probably find it amazingly funny and probably very gross. I don't know if you find this funny or not, but it gave me a laugh. Not too long ago, I got uh, paged out to a nursing home. Here we go for a woman in her nineties. Oh yeah, with an altered mental status. Woo! Fucking jackpot! A crazy old bitch in a nursing home. Here we go. I arrived and I got a brief history from the staff. The nurse in charge doesn't understand why I'm angry that they didn't call sooner, even though this woman is in terrible shape. Oh, is this going to be one of those sad ones? My partner checked her blood sugar, which was slow, and the nurse didn't understand what that meant or why it happened. They, oh, Dude, I know that. If your blood sugar's low, that's a bad thing. <clears throat> As a side note, the woman's supposed to have a higher knowledge than me. <clears throat> a low blood sugar is a simple fix and doesn't usually require a ride to the hospital. I start an IV and get medication that fixes this problem. The medication is short-lived and the patient needs real food to sustain her sugar levels. So I asked the nurse to get a sandwich. This bitch didn't understand why we needed the sandwich. Oh, why do we need to feed people? Nor did she know what medication I gave her. She didn't know what the medication I gave her did. The dumb cunt left after a minute or two, and I noticed that the patient was still not getting better, which should have happened very quickly after the medication. I checked her blood sugar again, which was now at a normal level, and then I noticed that the patient was now beginning to slump to her side, which is an indicative of a stroke. As another side note, low blood sugar can mimic or mask stroke symptoms. My partner and I started moving quickly to load the patient into the ambulance and get to the nearest stroke center as fast as possible. As we leave the room, the nurse reappears with a sandwich and asks if I still want it. I po- <laughs> what, she thought it was for you? I politely explained that the situation has changed and that while the patient did initially have a low blood sugar, the patient is now also having a fucking stroke. Fuck off with your sandwich. And that's probably why she's still unconscious. The nurse then asks if we still want the sandwich for when she makes up, wakes up. And I try to I, I try to explain the severity of the situation as we're moving to the ambulance. I tell her we're leaving and start to close the ambulance doors. And this bitch asks me what she wants to do, wants her to do with the sandwich, as now she went to the trouble of making it. I take this lady to the hospital and she died. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Probably because the nurse waited too long to call us. And held us up with the sandwich. Dude. This nurse killed a patient with a sandwich. I've never met a nurse more stupid than that. Nor so obsessed with sandwiches in the face of death. (laughs) Nursing homes usually offer terrible care. But that was abhorrent. I hope the story was at least interesting. Have a shittier one than the dead person cunt. And I think this is the second story this guy's told me about someone just fucking dying. Dude, the world's terrible, man. That's the only reason why I want to own 30 franchises is one, so I can tell everyone I got 30 franchises and two, so I never have to end up in a fucking nursing home where some bitch cares more about sandwiches than my life. 
That's fucking nuts, man. Dude, nursing homes. And you know what? America. That's what it is. They're, they're, your healthcare is fucked. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. How, I don't know. I feel like you know when you see YouTube comments where some people will will will, will write, "Hey, America's healthcare system is fucked because you have to pay like three hundred dollars for an inhaler when I can get one for six dollars without a prescription." And then America will be like, "Ah, shut up, you fucking communist! I can't afford the dentist, but." And, and for some reason, <laughs> pharmaceutical companies can advertise medicine, prescription medicine on, on the television and can take out doctors for nice lunches. But your country's fucked because everyone bands together and makes sure that, that my seizure medication is a bit cheaper. But you fucking communists and you socialize healthcare. Dude. Anyway, time for a lighter story. I hope I haven't read this one either. Uh, from Eve, the uh, the the lesbian. Uh, I'm so, I'm sorry to just fucking that's that's your only identity. Oh, you know that fucking dyke chick? Yeah, her. I'm sorry. I know you more than that, but in this email, I mean, all you've talked about is 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 licking other girls and fucking chicks. So I I, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe that is who you are as a person. It's just some chick who loves puss. And good on ya! Go for it. But, you know, if you're in the Scrabble or something, write it in the email so I can at least get an idea of who you are as a person other than your... I mean, then, then you can be the chick who likes Scrabble and pussy, you know? G'day, Lou. Eve here. I thought you might appreciate an update for me. Oh, right. I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, basically, from what I remember, I mean, I'm a fucking goldfish. This could be wrong. But uh, Eve uh, met a girl she really liked. Went back to her apartment to, to fuck her, uh, and then her uh, the girl's roommate came home. Eve is like Lebanese or some shit. Uh, the dude starts <clears throat> was really drunk, starts saying some like racist stuff, not not full on ah bloody I hate brown people, but like just racist comments. Uh, and she was like, "What should I do?" I said, "Look, maybe he's not actually racist. Maybe he was just really drunk, and that came out." Uh, so maybe instead of going to confront this dude about it, maybe just meet him sober. You may not have met the person. He could be a completely different person when he's sober. Not that I was excusing the behavior, but I was like, hey, maybe instead of starting an unnecessary fight and making your life hard for a little bit, you could meet the dude sober. And if he's still an asshole, then you can tell your fuck buddy, hey, I can't come over and root you there because, uh, you know, you, you gotta race this house, mate. Anyway. <clears throat> also, I did a whole bunch of ignorant shit. Like, I laughed about lesbians wearing denim vests. I, I think I said the denim vest was the gayest shit on planet Earth. If you see a woman in a denim vest, she's the, the gayest person on planet Earth. Which I stand by. Um, thought you might appreciate an update. Uh, and for you to clear out some of the questions you had. Firstly, who pays for the date? Butch lesbians normally tend to pay. <laughs> Whoever has the shorter haircut pays for the date. Butch lesbians tend to play more masculine roles, including paying the bill and even in sex. A lot of the time, they don't they don't like to receive pleasure, they just like to give it. Really? So if if you walk around in a denim vest with like a haircut shorter than mine, you just never come. Dude, no wonder they look so grumpy all the time. They just don't come. What you they what you mean? They never they you have sex with someone and then you go to go down on them and they're like, no thank you. I wear a denim vest and have a short haircut and pay for dates. Don't touch my pussy. That's so strange. What do they get out of it then? Cause I get I get maybe like having sex but n not coming. I mean Lord knows that's about fucking 70% of every girl's one night stand is just having sex and not coming, but they still do it. God bless their souls. All the straight chicks having no orgasms, but still fucking good on you. Troopers. But not, not at all. They don't receive pleasure at all. They just go in there fingers loaded. 
That's the strangest thing. I couldn't even imagine that. They don't like to receive pleasure, they just give it. Little lesbian fun fact for you. If you have two femmes, two feminine lesbians, as was the case of me and Andrea, okay, so we're dealing with a femme, I, two, I guess, it's normally the one that asked you out on the date. Oh, that makes sense. Since she asked me out for the drink, she offered to pay for mine. That's fair. I feel like that's fair. You ask, you pay. I guess so. <clears throat> Secondly, you were right. I was walking on the way to meet my friend who was also a lesbian while listening to you answer my question. I wanted to be salty at the denim vest part, but then I reached my friend who was sitting there in a denim, v denim vest. It even had patches on it. <laughs> I fucking told you! A denim vest with patches on it is the most les- That's more lesbian than eating a girl out and not letting you eat, eat, eat you out. That's way- that's so gay! A denim vest with patches on it is so much gayer than- than two dudes fucking each other. Or two- it's so much- so lesbian, man! A denim vest? Are you kidding me? I told you! Not even- not even lesbian women can get mad at that. Well, they can get mad at it, but they can't refute the evidence. Which is their fucking friends wearing that shit. That's hilarious. Uh, you were right when you said that I couldn't fuck at my place since I have a conservative leb parents. So being gay is out of the question, let alone bringing white girls back home to scissor on the fridge with. In the meantime, I jump back on Tinder to look for some BP. Back up puss. Pussy plan B, if you will. Right, you're just, you're, dude, you're just like fucking all the time. I met another gorgeous girl that has, an, has all queer housemates who work full time, so no drama there. Okay, so she works in, she lives in a fucking orgy house. So jelly. Anyway, <clears throat> Andrea actually got in contact with me about the racist housemate the day after to apologize for his behavior and to tell me that they'd been having problems a few days before and that he'd chosen to take it out on me and her. I went over for another pussy appointment the week after, and there he was, sober. Turns out, he's not actually a racist dickhead when he's sober, he's just a regular dickhead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He complained about not being able to get laid again, and made a half-assed attempt at what I could only assume was an apology. Oh, well, that's, that's nice, in a dickhead way. Uh, it turns out he had feelings for Andrea and made a move on her the week before we started hooking up. Oh, so he was just bitter that you were getting some of that pussy, but he wasn't. Um, <clears throat> she rejected him and told him that she was only interested in fucking girls. He got mad at her because she's had boyfriends in the past. That's like, dude, that's just like, oh. Oh, but you know, you, you know half the planet out of... You've had sex with one dude from half of the planet, so, I mean, what's the difference between me and him? Gee, I don't know, how about fucking 49.999%? Fucking idiot. Dudes are so weird like that. It's, it, you know what it's like? It's when they find out that a, that a girl is bisexual, that means to them that, oh yeah, she'll, she'll fucking make out with any chick that means. Oi. Kiss this girl, it'll be fucking hot. And then she's like, I don't know, she's not hot. Oh, but you're bisexual. It's like, yeah. You're fucking straight. Do you want to fuck that 300 pound chick? Uh, no. Oh, but you're straight. It's fucking... Dude sticky with their dicks. <clears throat> uh, she rejected him and told him she was only interested in fucking girls. He got mad at her because she's had boyfriends in the past. And if that was the case, why wouldn't she date him then? Oh, that's sad. Even though she's bisexual, she had no interest in fucking what looks like an anemic version of Big Bird. Really? She doesn't want to fuck me? That's rude. <laughs> I don't remember this. She had no interest in fucking what looks like an anemic version of Big Bird that eats in the downward dog yoga position. And she finds sex with girls better. I mean, who can blame her? Oh yeah, dude. Having sex with girls is pretty sick. Understanding this... And the pains of being rejected, I decided to accept his apology in the most spiteful way I know how. The most spiteful way I know how, by having really loud gay sex with the housemate he was in love with, with the in the room next door. 
I thought the uh, asshole part of you would appreciate that last part. Hey, I do appreciate... Thanks for everything. Keep up the hustle. I'll see you in your September show, Eve. Thanks, Eve. And yes, I do appreciate that. But uh, I would like to respond to that with... Uh, I think your asshole plan may have backfired because you know he had his... He was fucking in his room with his ear cupped against the wall just jacking it while he cried just listening to you two. I think you fucked up there. It's like, ha, ah, take that. We're going to have really loud erotic lesbian sex. Uh, that'll show him. Not really. He'll just have a wank. I mean, that's how I would respond to it. I'd be like, joke's on you, man. That's exactly why I cut this little hole in the, in my wall so I could see this kind of shit. <laughs> oh. So I could have a sad spy wank. And with that, guys, I'm going to end the podcast. Thanks for emailing in, uh, you two, Ambulance Man and Eve. I appreciate the updates. If you want to send an email in, if you need any life advice, or if you have a question or anything like that, uh, email podcast at loosebeers.com. If you would like to... Uh, Oh yeah, I suppose if you'd like to get early notice about when the comedy special comes out, j- jump on loosebeers.com slash gig list to get an email when it's all announced and when you can buy it and all that kind of shit. Uh, I'll have more information for you next week on the podcast unless something goes wrong, in which case I'll tell you what's gone wrong. But right now, we're on track and it's coming sooner than you think. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for uh, listening. I really do appreciate it and uh, I will talk to you next Sunday. Have the shittest one of all time, you lesbian motherfucker.